Hey, my lovelies. I'm just reflecting as I'm putting this shit away. I got some time and whatever. And, uh, well, you know, some relaxation time. So I can sort of put up my clothes and shit like that. I'm just fucking tired. Anyways, um, I was reflecting what my dad used to tell me when I was a teenager. I didn't quite get it at the time. Because I was, you know, because there's in, in African culture, the culture is... Many speak in parables, and they're taught this in school as well. And you have folk, folk tales and shit like that. So I remember my dad used to tell me, he said I was very immature, because, you know, I guess the way I was brought up here in America, and I went to Africa for a couple of years. Learning language too, but then I ended up forgetting it. I can hear some of the stuff, but not all. But my dad, he told me, he said, um, my dear daughter, you have people crying crocodile tears over you. I'm like, what? I didn't get it. And he said, crocodile tears. So then I realized, now fast forward, 30 some odd years later, my dad came to my mind. Rest his soul. Um, but he's at peace. So he did what he did. He taught me a lot of things. He said, when you have children, your children are your visitors. You, you you don't own them. You're here to produce, make a foundation, and then individually they'll leave you at the end. Which means that, you know, maybe get married, go on their own way, your own journey, whatever. But when he said that people will cry, quote, quote it out tears, you know, over me, it's happening now. People try to destroy me, uh, put me in destitution, hinder me. Not give me what was owed to me from my parents or my mother and my father too. I can't even go to Africa before he passed due to a bogus court hearing. Um, and they know our, our our tribe is very strong. They know if I go to Africa, it's a wrap for them. And the people who travel to Africa, like the whites or the Caucasians, there's a lot of Asians over there, a lot of Indians. They know the power. Of spirituality, tradition, and uh, they call it the medicine man or the medicine doctor, whatever. They know the power of that, especially on the east side of the, of the continent. So now people are, you know, up in trouble. They've been stalking me, harassing me, following me, um, watching the hidden cameras. Um, knocking on my door. This is another North Island. They started over here too, harassing me, tearing my temporary plate off, and coming to my apartment. Now they're caught, they're now they're caught up. That's the power of spirituality. You don't have to do anything. The karma will get them. And those who have your best interest at heart will make sure of it, that they pay the consequence, the ultimate consequence. And I don't know who's behind it as far as... Um, good-hearted people. I know there are some who rooting for me. Um, someone trying to help me. You know, I was, trying, I was being poisoned. I mean, if you see my stomach, if I post my picture, I have it on my video, but I, I, I made it private. My whole stomach is gray and black. That's where I was poisoned. I ingest something. I tell you, my stomach was huge. Like I was like nine months pregnant. But it went down because I used some, some different regimens and I have my blood pressure meds and that and water pill. But it was more than that. I can feel like narcotic, like, like necrosis, like death, dead skin, dead organs in my system. I can feel it, you know, but I'm healing. But when my dad told me this stuff, and I'm, and, I'm, and I'm reflecting on different things. I seen three people in the islands have the same type of like stroke type look on their face on the right side. Three different people. I don't know if they're connected or not. One of them trying to deny me, you know, to buy a firearm. He was like, we don't know if you're going to harm somebody. That's the same thing the sheriff had said um, in the islands because they would got my medical records in my apartment and spread it around. And Warren Smith was behind it as well because he's going through my apartment on my own. The two shit, chicken shit, they can't do it in my face. 
And another guy who was a, a friend to my worker, same, same shit on his face. Slooped eye like I had a stroke. Another guy, Afghanistan, mouth way over to the right. Now people begging for forgiveness, not directly, but indirectly. So it makes me reflect on what my dad had tell me because he's talking parables. I didn't quite get it because you know in America, depending on you know, your family, you know, my mom's American or was because she passed on. You know, they don't speak in parables. And he taught me so much because, which, which, you know, if you want to know about parables, whatever, it's in Psalms, it's in the Bible. You know? And now people are begging for my forgiveness indirectly. And they say they're sorry. I'm like, sorry for what? They don't tell me the real reason. So what are you sorry for? Sure enough. Remember, you know anyway. And when I had a download by my brother, who's currently incarcerated, now it's confirmed. He had a green suit. He was sitting on a bench. It was dark, and he said, he told me he was sorry. I told my sister about it. And she said, I said, I told her I had a vivid dream. I still remember it, we was wearing everything. Like scrubs, you know? The, the, the nurses were in the hospital. But it probably was an infirmary. He said he was sorry. I woke up. The mother's half sister was half Af who was African. You know, when she went to Africa and my mom passed, like it went immediately. And I was choked in my sleep. I woke up, gasping for air. Since I don't have her number, I'm gonna cuss her ass out. She can't do that. She can't control me. She can't mother me. But she's worried too. You know. So I wanted to share this bit. I have a lot of stuff. I have a lot, you know, for years and years of shit. But my dad, he was very instrumental. And I was kind of hard-headed. As far as my son, hard-headed too. Probably. <laughs> my youngest one. Because I was Americanized. And I wanted to do the American way. And shit like that. But the little bit that I got, the education I got from my father. Or my dad, rather. I see it now. And I knew, I was like, man, because even I'm here reflecting, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just ranting on, that uh, all these years I've been, I've been, um, what's the word, um, I stopped, but hindered. I was doing my own thing, I applied for my jobs, I did all my interviews, I work, you know, my plans are buying a home and everything else, you know, retire, and then I, there's a fork in the road. My ex is one of them. His attorney, which is, she's now a judge, Bumi Awani, kept me in court constantly. Stress, losing my items, you know, moving from here to there, unemployment. Until I got housing, I was like, okay, I can relax now. I was going through it. And then they didn't like that. My ex called the housing, uh, so I got my housing for development. And Got my information too, and he put in the court documents to 2010. Everybody knew about about me until we had a so-called bench trial, but it was, a, it was a bogus bench trial. And the judge allowed it. He was Filipino. I forgot the guy's name but anyway. He, he's he's not a factor. And then they brought a Sacramento police officer, like a slob. He had like a blue uniform on. Like a slob testifying. I'm like, what? And I didn't get word of it either. And after that, then my brother. Well, now that I see now, my brother and his wife from Chicago. Because after that, after they came visit, everybody I moved to, oh, Fatima, let me come over. Mama does, mama that. Oh, I want you to meet my son's my mom, blah, blah, blah. They spend the night, they go by, take them swimming and shit like that. And all of a sudden, things started happening. Tired on the flat. My axle loose, gas in my apartment, phone echoing, staticky, you know? And now it's rumors. Oh, she's a prostitute. She sells drugs because when they stopped me from getting cash aid, when I, when I got off of work, when I got fired from work, and I, and I couldn't get a job, and I didn't know what to do. You know, I have these kids, 
not cord. Everything was in disarray. And then down the welfare, they go, oh, we need this, we need that. We need proof of this, we need proof of that. We need this, that, and the other. And I'm like, I submit this shit. Like, even now, the reason they, they, they got me for cash aid, how about, oh, you're discontinued because we have a make and model of your car. Okay, I submitted that verbally through a redetermination process on the phone. And personally, I got a receipt. Now, they said that they didn't get it. They did get it. They wanted to entrap me. You know, she had money. She did, she did, she did, she did. Oh, we need your, your bank statement, this and that. These two banks, which somebody came to my apartment and got the information I could my other video I told you about. And even I submitted that, it was wrong anyway. I did it anyway. Trying to play I Spy. And they still didn't move. So they wouldn't trap me. The county second member was kind of upset with me anyway because maybe it's the staff members, you know, whatever. Because I, I started doing the child support uh, channel. And the men are mad too because I am I know the process. Now, if I wasn't in child support, wrongfully done, you better believe it. I wouldn't be talking about that shit. I'd be like, everybody else, y'all gotta pay, <laughs> you know? But I've learned, I read the manual. It's like a thousand pages. I read it. You don't have to submit, I'm trying to tell you. And they didn't like that. Then that do that they were doing um um what's it called? When they put the the, the tense up uh, outreach. They didn't ask for money for outreach from the federal government for the grant program. And they're blaming me for it. No, don't blame me for it. You blame Bumi Awani and Frederick White for doing a falsified case. You know? Now they're in dire straits. About 12 judges, if not more, including attorneys, were fired, well, retired from our courts. And I hate to believe it's because of me. My shit, whatever I wrote, whatever, because they started looking into my stuff. I said, okay, she's on Section 8. She's on this. We don't call Section 8 Housing Choice Voucher Program. Okay, she's getting this, she's getting that. Supposedly, she has a, a monthly payments of trust fund. Who is she? They started digging. My court cases, rallying, uh, my comments for legislation. Um, you know, I went to these uh, forums with the state, the local government, whatever. They said, oh my God. And she didn't get a remedy? Oh, you fired. Well, they forced them to retire, you know what I mean? I could still attack their, their pensions if I really wanted to. That's why Judge Mice went up to the shelter. We need this, we need that, and all of a sudden we look at these phones. He's a dirty old man. See, he's a, he's a narcissist, he's a sociopath. But he, he, wrote, he put his finger up to his head like I was crazy. He's a crazy guy, he's a social worker turned judge. And he's loud, he get a kick out of um, hurting families. Oh, yes, he does. So this harassment and stalking. And I'm in the same area where my stalkers were, are at. They saw me at the store. They were, they were shocked. Holding their chest. You know? Even my family, they don't want to see. When I went to one messenger, she confirmed what I already knew. But she confirmed it to the T. She's in the East Coast somewhere. And then I told my daughter, I said, yeah, this is you right here. Your bank, your this, your that. And she, my daughter got off social media. She didn't want to talk to me no more than, than a couple, I think a month later or so. The, 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 um, the messenger was like, and I love her delivery. Um, she was like, now they want to talk to the privileged lady because they want to make it appear they don't talk to her. I said, oh my God. I wanted to say so much, but I said, I can't do it. And, uh, you see, I told my children at the time, 
trying to set you up. Don't you get it? I'm trying to get you out of my care. People should commend me. Oh, you have beautiful children. They're very well behaved. They're respectful. They're, you know, this and that. Blah, 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 blah. They didn't like that. Even my ex didn't like that. They hated it. Single mother working. Her kids dressed well. Going to school. They're humbled down in disarray. You know? They didn't like that. So they had to break up the family unit. I do that. That's, that's textbook psychology. My kids are so hard-headed. They didn't want to listen. You know? Out there prostituting and shit like that. Who does that? You know? They did the accomplishment. And then they went, went after my youngest son. Giving him drugs and shit. Growing as adults, talking to a 14-year-old at a table. Go watch the video at the shelter. You see it. She'll be disrespectful talking back. Shit like that. Because other kids were doing it to their parents. So if I see if I had the energy, I would, I would choke him out. I would have choked his ass out. But he knew uh, at the time I was sick. Couldn't breathe. And everybody said, oh, he's angry for you. Like, like it was a, like they're trying to make it seem it was me. No, you watch that camera. And they're spreading shit around. That's why the people at the shelter are crying crocodile tears right now. Like my dad said. You know? It's very unfortunate because everybody knew. They said, oh, you're a rich lady. You're rich. I said, how? They knew everything before I even knew. I mean, before I started thinking about that shit. I mean, I thought about it, but not really wholeheartedly. They were saying shit that, I'm like, what? One girl is about from Oak Park, Colorado. She didn't want her kids, so she got rid of them and put them in foster care. I heard that same story before. That was my brother. That's why he don't get what he gonna get. All of them are crying because they thought they can get over the system. Don't you know the system? We're in the age of technology. I'm gonna fucking turn your phone off. They're still listening to your conversations. I don't care if you leave your phone at home. You take the vaccinations, they listen to everything that you do anyway. The car, the technology, everything. People don't write no more. People don't, I can't say any much more, but, you know, it's always a conspiracy until it happens. Oh, yeah, she did say that. I got attorneys following me, stalking me, you know, they were going to the store, do my, my own business. They look stressed the fuck out. Beard. Like, 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 like it been up. Covered up shit. But I always watch my surroundings. You come close to me, I'll get you. I'm prepared this time. I got nothing to lose. I lost it all, really, basically. Because they leave me alone. Like my dad said. If you can't see a white goat in the daytime, how you gonna see a white goat at night? Which means, if you can't see this, the obvious shit, a white object in the daytime. How do you see that same white object at night? That means you're blinded. You gotta, you gotta check your surroundings. Speak when you need to speak. You know? But this is a good shout out to my father, or my dad. I was thinking, father wasn't a father really, but I was a teenager, but. You know, he lived in his own way, but I'm going to say that um, he said it. People are probably fucking up to you. So here we are today. They're crying it right now. Regretting. That's why I go online with my hair wrap on. <laughs> my hair be a mess. No makeup, whatever. That's true me. Who cares? People are going to judge you regardless. If you look nice, if you don't, whatever it is. They're going to critique you anyway. But that's what they're going to regret. Even if I'm like, oh, yeah. She looked like this. I will never mess with her. But yet you're saying I got this disease and I'm this and I'm that. I'm fat. What's that? But they don't give a fuck. Once you got a hole, they can take what they can get. They're crying now. And I'm laid on thick. And like I said, I want to thank all you guys who have contributed, who spoke on it, whether you like me, you don't like me, or you just say it, whatever it is. I don't know. But I wish somebody would have said something years ago. 
and then told me some shit. And, uh, you know, like I said, shout out to those 